90-year-old woman says to her husband, Honey, come upstairs and make love. He says, I can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guess what? For my summer vacation, I put my fan on high. <laughs> I love a man who looks like he just gets by. <laughs> You know what it's like when you're not successful and your mother tells you about somebody who is? Did you know that Jack's son just sold his business for $90 million? See, I didn't know that. But I'm glad she told me because otherwise I wouldn't feel like shit. I, I mean, I hear success stories that are mind-boggling. This one's the top headache doctor in the world. This one's building a home in Florida, 125,000 square feet. Can you imagine what she tells her friends about me? If all goes well, I think Brad is going to buy a bookcase. <laughs> you have to know things. I know two things about wine. We have it or we don't. I had a customer once, he said to me, what's the difference between the Cabernet and the Cote du Rhone? I said a dollar. <laughs> There is a big controversy on the Jewish view of when life begins. In Jewish tradition, the fetus is not considered viable till after it graduates from medical school. <laughs> Which reminds me of a very short Jewish fairy tale. A very short Jewish fairy tale. A Jewish man says to a Jewish woman, will you marry me? She says no. And he lived happily ever after. <laughs> I want to tell you a blind date story. My mother went on one blind date. It's a true story. Guy pulls up in a 1960-something maroon Cadillac. He gets out of the car. He slowly straightens up. He's got to be at least 90. He's wearing an outfit that goes with the car. He starts moving, but it's not apparent. He gets to the steps, he literally collapses. Finally gets up, he rings the bell. My mother answers the door, she looks at him, she says, thank you, I had a very nice time. <laughs> When my mother asked me all those years ago how much longer I was going to give the acting, and I said, when I've given it my best shot, I'll get out, never mind giving it my best shot. It took me almost 20 years just to give it a shot. To use an apt metaphor, I was on the sidelines for many years. I wasn't even in the game. Fear got the best of me. If you add to that how hard, how incredibly hard I was on myself, it was not a nurturing situation. I had a friend who said to me, you're the only person who can do a one-man show and not get along with the cast. <laughs> now, I'm at my best when I know that an audience is going to get me. As such, a New York Jew performing at an Indian casino in Minnesota during ice fishing season does not conform to that ideal. Perhaps I should have told them that I have some Indian blood. And my mother's name is Little Overbearing Running Mouth. <laughs> you, you mean it's not because I want to make it before I'm 30 and I'm 45? 
or that I made more money at my bar mitzvah than I did last year. <laughs> I had a situation recently, everybody here can relate to this. I get to the airport two hours before a flight, okay? I board a plane right before takeoff. We're on the tarmac. They cancel the flight. Six hours later, I board a plane. They welcome you aboard like like it didn't even happen. Yeah. Folks, this is your pilot, Jay North, along with my co-pilot, Doug Patterson. I want to welcome you to Delta Flight 123 LaGuardia. Temperature very pleasant, 76 degrees. Estimated flying times of three hours. Thank you once again, finally speaking once. Enjoy the flight, live with you. Apologize for the inconvenience, but certainly be in Philadelphia line. I mean, give me somebody who understands my pain. How about a pilot who speaks for me? This is your pilot, Milton Zabalski. Along with my co-pilot, Bernie Seltzer, I just want to say, I wish I still smoked. I was supposed to be in New York six hours ago. I needed to make a deposit to cover a check. I wanted to go to the gym. My day is shot. Now I find out we're number 17 to take off. What am I supposed to do? Read another sports section? Fuck the tower. I'm taking off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>